Hi, today we're going to try to fix a MacBook, which is something I don't have. I don't think there's any MacBook uh, repair videos on my channel, so um, I'm going to kind of take a stab at this one. I don't know. It looks like a pretty big rabbit hole. Here's the note. This, uh, this is a board that has a short to ground on the DC in rail, so already I can tell that uh, the guy sending this one in uh, knows what he's talking about. Um, if you get confused, there's a guy on YouTube that did a video fixing this problem with a short in the board in the exact same section, and then there's a link to some video. Um, I've crossed a wire somewhere, I'm sure. All right, so um, I'm not gonna watch that video. I'm gonna try to see if we can uh, fix this ourselves just by figuring it out. So what are we starting with? Uh, let's look under the microscope. So I, I've looked at this board a little bit already and I see a whole bunch of wires. So I see a chip up here that has a bunch of wires and that's not where it goes. So it looks like it used to live here in what appears to be a burned out section of the board. So this is probably um, a short that caught on fire. I love to fix these fire boards and burned itself out in that area. And then there's a bunch of uh, jumpers. Here's another area. It looks like, I wonder if that was short as well. I'm not sure. Here's another chip. So this is, this is definitely a lot of creativity going on. And when I first got this board, um, I started checking out all these jumpers to see, uh, to see if they made sense. And they do. So I have confidence that this was a good start. And um, I've... I followed the jumpers that were on the board and I didn't find anything that jumped out at me as a crossed wire. So, um, so what's the next step? So um, my approach um, is sort of like the girl's approach instead of the boy's approach to MacBook board repair. So the boy approach is to light things on fire and burn them out of the board. And the girl approach is to, um, you know, be more gentle and to see if we can uh, uh, gently relieve a short through um, kind of a delicate hand. So let's look and see what my approach is here on this donor board. In that same area that's burned out on our fixed board, so the chip normally sits on pads like this. And in our fixed board, this whole chunk, this whole section is gone. So my first thought was, you know, let's try to see if we can come up with what is the native architecture under there as far as actual lines and traces in the board. So I started shaving down um, the area like this. All right, so I got through a couple layers of the board and then we can figure out pretty readily that uh, this line here is the uh, sort of DC in line from the charger. So let's look and see what that looks like on the schematic. All right, so we can see uh, from the charger here comes this PPDCN underscore G3H. So that's the line that is sort of in question leading to this thing. Here's the chip that is uh, been removed and, and burned out. And this is really sort of the burned area of the chip. So we have this uh, DC in line that's gonna carry a relatively high voltage and something happened here where it burned a bunch of stuff up. Uh, this looks like a transistor where some signal at a gate is going to connect source and drain. And then the same thing over here. Some signal at a gate is going to connect source and drain. So if both of these uh, gate signals were present, then source, ultimately the charger, would go all the way through this chip and, uh, and, and connect and go out the other side. And, then, and ultimately come down here and give charging uh, current sensing input here down to the charging logic chip, the U7100, that is the guy that controls the, you know, communication between the SMC and the charger to allow charging to happen. All right, so let's focus here on this line, the DC in G3H line, because, let's see, we can measure it here at R7185. So let's find R7185. So we'll go over to our uh, board view and we can type in C for component. Show me component R7185. And we'll find it. And so here it is on the side of the board where you see these four blocks and then there's a little square chip. And we can drill down and see R7185. 
So let's try to actually find that on our, the resistor is the same. Now on the donor board, I want to measure the resistance to ground itself of the line, because I think that might be where the, the problem is here. So here's the top of that uh, resistor, which is pin one. And if we click back to our screenshot, this is gonna be really difficult with a mouse that doesn't want to play nicely today. All right, so pin one here, it's the line uh, DC and G3H. And if we correspond that to the schematic, pin one is on that same line. So I'm just gonna measure the resistance of this line to ground and compare that between the dead board and the normal board and see whether or not that's the problem. I did a little bit of kind of hunting around on this board earlier, and I think that's kind of where, uh, where this sort of led me. All right, so this one is the donor board. So I'm just gonna measure straight up resistance to ground. So I'll put a probe on ground. All right, resistance to ground of that line is 68 kilo ohms. So 68 kilo ohms resistance to ground is the normal value. And that was true as well on the other donor board. Since these donor boards, you don't know if they also have a problem in that same line or not. They're not really known good, or I wouldn't expect them to be, or else they'd be fixed boards. All right, so now let's measure uh, here on our to be fixed board, the same thing, resistance to ground of that, uh, of that line, and it's 16 kilo ohms. So 16 kilo ohms when it should be 68 kilo ohms, I think is a big enough difference that that's a problem. So that's a low resistance to ground, and I'd like to try to find out why. It's very consistent with our kind of overall picture of the problem that the line, that, that uh, DC inline kind of comes through here, the burned up area, and it, connect, and it talks to that chip in order to allow the pass through of the charger voltage to the charging logic chip. And when it's all burned up like that and now has low resistance to ground, um, then it is very consistent with the overall problem that the charging current sensing then is going to be off uh, and um, the whole thing's not gonna turn on. So I think we need to at least solve that problem. I don't know if that's the only problem, but I think we need to solve that. So now strategy, what's a good strategy? I would like to first, and this might be a dumb idea and waste up a bunch of time, but this is, I, I like to, you know, I do so much trace repair and see, uh, you know, tiny little things. And I really see every day the impact of, <coughs> the impact of like some small, tiny little nano connection. Um, so I'm gonna start drilling down on these lines to just get sort of a picture of the area and see if I can then kind of clean up uh, and expose that other board to really get rid of the dead board, the burned up board, and get a, it's kind of like debriding a burn <laughs> and try to see if I can uh, make a solution that way. So what I have so far is I've just used an X-Acto knife up, up till now uh, to scrape, scrape, scrape away in this area of the burn. And now I've gotten down to this line here. And if I use my multimeter in continuity mode, I can, you know, figure out that this line here, you know, it looks big. Is it ground? You know, I can put a probe here on ground, like over here, doesn't beep to ground, it's not ground. And then I can guess that it might be that DC in line. So I can put a probe here on the, um, on the board and then I can hunt around for um, another area that the board view tells me is the same line. So this guy here, you know, this spot is the same line. So I get a beep there. So that's that same exact um, PPDCNG3H line. And again, if I measure resistance to ground there because it's the same line, I'm gonna get the same uh, relatively low value. All right, so that line in our, in our uh, fix board is, uh, has a partial short somewhere. All right, so it's, it's touching something it shouldn't be. All right, so how are we gonna do this? I'm going to get out a, um, a fiberglass pen. So this is just a piece of fiberglass. You can get them like this, and it goes in a little kind of pen thing like this. And now this gets really messy. So I'm gonna kick on the 
air handling, which a lot of times I leave off because it sounds horrible. So that's going to be what you get to listen to unless you want to fast forward. And we'll just do this for a little bit and then I think I'll probably, you know, I think this would get too boring. So we'll make a clip and, uh, and come back to it. So I'm just going to put some alcohol here on the board and then I'm just going to have at it with the fiberglass pen. So you just have to do that and it's a long process but it makes a really, really smooth um, picture of the, as you sort of step down through the board. All right, so there's something under there crosswise, but another layer of the board. So the, these, now that we're just sort of at the level of the vias, we can probably see if they kind of have no more connection and they don't go anywhere or if they you know are connected to something sort of from the um but for now <coughs> that's this is sort of what i'm what i'm seeing here is that there's really a lot of nothing in this area except for the dc inline and then this little guy let's do check his resistance to ground while we're here in the area All right, so 3.6 mega ohms. So that's, um, so that's pretty good on the one side. The other side has no path to ground. All right, so given this picture, I wanna see if we can kind of get a little bit of cleanup done on our donor board and kind of come to see how this donor board, you know, matches that same pattern all right let's check so here we went quite quite far over see how these layers are just sort of like mashed together i think they're all they're they're ground we know that these layers are ground but we also know that this sort of middle layer which we can guess is this one here is the dc in line that it's mashed together you know so it, it would be great if we can just sort of in a really smooth way kind of clean that up. And I think I'm going to make a clip here and I'm going to go investigate a better tool for this job because I think that, uh, that it'll go a lot smoother with a different, a different application. Fiberglass pen works great on iPhone boards, but these, these boards are big. All right, so I got this out now, a Dremel tool, and I think, I think this Dremel tool does a better job. So I put it on the uh, donor board See if it would work. I tried a couple different attachments. This one just takes away a lot, like you know, pretty quickly. So then we can kind of smooth it out. So you know, I just kind of dug up in here and then got the multimeter out and tested. So that's another ground plane. So we'll be able to come back and figure out what these different vias, if it's important, what they go to. And then if we kind of tap into these vias here, we might be able to at least like kind of keep our jumpers on one side of the board or. Um, you know, it might, it might make it sort of uh, less wires everywhere that's going to freak people out. But maybe not. I think this board's going to end up looking like, as Lewis said, a crackhead tied to shoes. All right. So let's go back to, uh, to this guy. So now let's see if we can just kind of smooth this down uh, overall. So I'm going to use this tool now. And we're going to kind of, we've learned that there's not a lot going on in here, so we don't have to really worry that much. And 
We're just trying to kind of fillet a way to get to the good part of the board here. Alright, so from what we know about this board, now we know that these these guys really aren't supposed to talk to anything on this level. So we can kind of really clear that all out so that they're just these sort of nine via stumps. So this is probably our, that needs to be separated most likely. And so now things are flattening out and they're kind of starting to look like a strip mine. And so things are not loose and floppy and they're, they're kind of beginning to, to kind of take some definition here. What a beautiful little moon crater. Looks like we've popped the, the board's pimples. All right, let's get this jumper out of here. We'll put it back later if we need these jumpers. All right, let's take some stock here. Let's see where we are and if we have uh, made any progress here. So let's see uh, what's ground. So this is ground. This should not be ground and not touching ground. That is ground. Ring around the ground. Well, that I think should be separated. You can just kind of get that off. All right, this I think is our DC inline. So let's test that over to our little spot. So that is our DC inline. All right, so this is the one that should have not <laughs> should have high, a 68.68k resistance to ground and it did not earlier so let's see if that has improved any all right so it's still has low resistance to ground so that line um is still our problem so now that this could tell us that the low resistance to ground is uh due to i think we should take off all of these jumpers and see if that kind of kind of helps out and then we'll just sort of put them back put them back as necessary and at this point I don't feel like this area this burned up area is is uh, you know super unknown it is uh, pretty well defined that I'm not sure if that's Probably still that DC in line. Let's find that out actually. If so, I kind of want to separate that a little bit. All right, so that that right there is uh, supposed to be separated, and I don't really like how mashed together that is right now. That is not enough separation at all. Anywhere near, I'm probably gonna cut that off. Oh, here we go. Ha! 42 kilo ohm resistance to ground. Dun, 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 dun. Now we're getting somewhere. So it looks like this mashing was part of our problem. 42 kilo ohm resistance to ground. Sweet! All right, let's try to get that guy really just out of there. Let's, you know, we kind of want to get back to the strong part of the board. 
And, you know, because you know, there's a ground layer below that we figured out as well. This just doesn't need to be there at all. Like that, I can still feel the texture that is like kind of burnt. It'd really be worth it, I think, to get a finer, you know, there's, there's all kinds of Dremel tool tips that would be, you know, like a really fine tip would, would, grit, would really help to kind of, you know, get this area uh, perfectly precision separated. All right, so now he's more, unless there's been like physical, the, the mashing there, then, you know, he's protected by the layers of the sort of substrate between the layers of the board. All right, let's see now. All right, we're up to 45, 47, 48, 49, 51, 55. You can see why Lewis likes the diode measurements. Because this is taking forever for it to settle down. 63. So I'm just sitting here looking at the resistance on the multimeter. I'm, I'm measuring actual resistance to ground with one probe here on the ground plane and the other probe on that uh, DC in line. All right, so it looks like it's hovering around 60. So that is probably at least the primary problem. All right, I did a little bit more work on uh, cleaning up the burn hole area on this, um, on this MacBook board. And I put it through ultrasonic so we can kind of get a better picture. Um, and I think that we're in good shape. It's time to uh, start putting back the jumpers. Let's check on the short area now that it's really kind of all cleaned out. On the donor board, it was fun. I got all the way down and actually put a hole through the, through the board. So I kept uh, dremeling it down and using the fiberglass pen. And you can, can you see that? You can actually see right through the board, which is pretty cool right there. Let's <laughs> um, That's cool. I wonder if it can. So back to our board. So when we started this project, the underlying problem was that this board was reading less than one kilo ohm resistance to ground on that line, um, and so the strategy here was to dig out. Um, the the burn area and clean it up and really try to clarify what's going on in that area to try to see if the underlying defect is really just that some of those layers are mashed together and if we could tease them out by filleting through the board um, which the donor board was kind of our project first showed us that there's really not that much going on in that area if you have uh, you know a, a hole like this burned in your board that's near the CPU, you're not going to be able to do this because there's going to be zillions of tiny lines in there. If you have an iPhone board, you know, this is like a trace damage repair from long screw damage, which again is, is inherent board damage, which layer traces that are buried in the board are broken, and it's a real pain in the ass, but you can kind of tease it out. So this project is, is one that I'm kind of really just doing for fun, um, but uh, it is a relatively common problem in the MacBook Air, so you may come across it. And I think that, um, you know, s at least being able to look at the video and see what the layers are and what they look like uh, might be helpful. But ultimately, your goal is to um, get these guys connected back together and not have a short there. So um, now we can now remember that this line here that dc in line the trace you can see it clear as day it is now fully separated from any contact with ground in fact you can kind of lift it up a little bit and wave it around so now if we measure putting a probe on that line 
and let's go back to our exact same ground screw that we've been using and now we'll measure the resistance to ground uh, right there. So it's measuring 52.4. Let me lift it up a little bit and see if that kind of improves. I think I'm going to put, for now, I'm just going to put a little piece of, tiny piece of tape under it because there is a tiny little trace of a different line that kind of sits right under that. I need that to be a lot smaller than that. Now, you know, I don't like doing repairs that have a ton of jumpers all over the board. I try to keep the jumpers as short as possible, as robust as possible, and as isolated as possible. Uh, but in this case, man, that's not going to be possible. So um, in the end, you know, we'll come in here with some you know, sort of epoxy and, you know, get everything in a really stable way. My goal is that any repair that I do that has micro jumpers, you could take the board and you could throw it down the stairs and it, and those jumpers are not going to move or cross or talk to anybody they're not supposed to be talking to. All right, let's do that. Now let's measure without it making any contact with anything down below. 67.8. Kilo ohms to ground. So there we go. So that I think is the solution to the core problem here. So now it's a matter of seeing if that's the only problem or not. So we're going to kind of leave, leave that there. So that guy's intact and that guy's, you know, okay. Um, in the end, we'll come back and fill this all in with epoxy, but for now we're still kind of in the diagnosis testing stage. And I just want to see if this works or if we have to come back and solve more problems. So it's premature to start really, you know, trying to make this permanent now, like you would want to uh, give it protection um, when, when you're ultimately done. Okay, so now we have to make sure that that line is talking to everybody that it should. So let's go back to the schematic. All right, so here's the schematic. So here's DC in. All right, so DC in starts at the uh, connector. So pin one of the connector needs to talk all the way to this, uh, you know, 68K RO712 resistor, and it needs to go through this transistor guy <coughs> and go on about its merry way. So we need to make sure that all of that is intact. Uh, so let's make sure that the connector pin one can talk to R7012. So that's sort of our, our first challenge. All right, so let's go back to here. So the connector is down here and pin one is at the end. So now I'm going to go back to continuity testing mode and see if, if I put a probe there, can it talk to our buddy, that little resistor up here? I forget, I think this side. And the answer is no. So there's no beep there. So that's a problem. So what are we gonna do to solve that? So, um, so it has to be able to talk to that guy because that's what the schematic says. Pin one of the, the connector has to talk to R7012. So what are our options? Because that's not happening. And this is, this is kind of you know, to, be, to be expected because we know for sure that there's a big hole in the board and we know for sure that this line went through that hole. So it's really not surprising that there may be breaks in the line. We just have to find all those. So. Um, one option would be that we could run a jumper from this pin one all the way across the board and tack it in right here at that resistor. I'm not a big fan of that method. And then it looks like the project that we're kind of inheriting, I see something going on a little weird here with the DC inboard that, uh, that he sent with us. And you can see that it is cut off on a couple of these, uh, you know, uh, connector, <laughs> connector wires. And this, it's just so clever. I just love it. So creative. 
this this extra wire is added to the DCN board and it has a couple of these jumpers that I've now cut off when, we're, when I'm trying to troubleshoot the board. So this initially, uh, as designed, was gonna you know, plug in here and then this was the long jumper that goes all the way and sort of plugged into the board in a couple spots. And that probably would work. That's what I love about this project is it was so, so clever and creative and so thoughtful. Um, and it just kind of was one of those ones where we've all had it. I think this is, if this does end up working, I think that this is really just a um, confidence problem, you know, like this should have worked. Um, and I think that it just got so complex with so many creative workarounds and jumpers that it's hard to keep track of all that stuff. And when it doesn't work, you know, uh, you think that, you know, what's the problem with the device? It's going to be what was the most recent work done? Something is messed up with that. So you do it two or three times. Uh, but if that doesn't solve it, then maybe there was a secondary problem, which is the case here. The secondary problem was despite all of this sort of work around, it still had a uh, low resistance to ground. Not a full short, just a low resistance to ground on that line. All right. So this is one option. Let's see if we can come up with a option that has less and shorter jumpers. That's always my goal, less and shorter jumpers. I don't know, maybe that's a good option. <laughs> it's all, it's definitely well insulated. I like that about it. You know, this is, I mean, it's so clever. I love it. Electrical tape, so cute. All right, so uh, let's, let's see what we can do. Uh, so, um, Let's find our, let's find the, the crater. Okay, so here we are. All right, so now let's ask the question of, does this DC in line talk to the connector? And it should not because we know that DC in line does talk to the resistor up above, but let's just find out. So we'll put a probe there and then we'll go out here to the end of the connector, no beep. So it doesn't talk to there. Now, what I want to do is remember that in the crater in here, uh, there were a couple of planes, one of which for sure we know was that DC in line. So um, if we can figure out which sort of one of these kind of layers of strata here, I guess, um, is the DC in line, then we should be able to uh, make a shorter micro jumper. So I'm going to put one probe out here on the... Um, pin one of the connector and now I am going to just hunt listening for a beep to see if I can figure out where is the line that comes natively in the board so we don't have to have a long overland jumper so it's not going to be this because that's ground is it this is it this all right there we go all right so that's it let's Let's see what else. All right, so all three of those. Interesting, not that one. Not down there, cool. All right, so it's so it's this sort of major. These these must be micro vias then for that DC in line to go up and down in the board. And this sort of it was a part of like a little bit of a plane, <clears throat> so it kind of flattens out and makes a plane at some points. Not that, not that, not that, not that. All right, so let's try to pick the best one that's happened. I think that guy. All right, so now we know that if we make a connection between that microvia, which is the path in the board from the connector through the board up to, and we're gonna just kind of build a little jumper to connect to the remaining piece of, um, of DC in line. So let's get a piece of magnet wire, super thin gauge, 36 AWG. You know, I get so many, hey, what's your microscope, blah, blah, 
questions. I consider all of that kind of stuff that you learn when you come to school. Um, at some point, I, make, I may make a video uh, that, that kind of details equipment. For now, Lewis, Lewis has a video that is the tools I use and why I bought them or something like that. Go watch that video. That's exactly... There's very there's there's not a whole lot of difference in our equipment setup, especially especially not anymore. I use micro tweezers; he doesn't use that. Um, but other than that, it's a lot the same. All right. I use short jumpers. <laughs> he he he's a fan of the long jumper. All right. I mean, it's about funny that like how when I work with Mark and with Lewis, just like how everybody kind of develops their own style and, you know, kind of what they what they think is important or what what works for them. And, you know, Lewis makes fantastic jumpers that are really, really robust. Um, but and he doesn't care if they're long or not, though, he'll wrap them around the board 13, 16, 25 times. Um, but I, I don't know that long jumpers just kind of freak me out. And then Mark is the opposite. He makes the tiniest, like, microscopic jumpers ever. And I am in the middle. I try to make short jumpers where I can. And if it's not practical, then I don't worry about it. All right. So this one. We're going to try and get over here. All right, so we're going to... We kind of have to imagine this whole like, pimple is filled up with a, you know, insulator that is going to keep these guys separated. It's almost like we're building a little circuit board right here in this spot out of jumper wires, and we're going to have to ultimately fill it in with the, what, the, the board substrate that's now missing. And we're going to kind of use different, uh, different tools than actual board substrate, but it'll still be the same thing. It'll be some kind of insulator. All right, now this is really delicate, that like flap of trace, so I don't want to really stress it out too much. All right, so that's a micro jumper. So now let's see if that solves our problem of do we have continuity from the connector? So pin one of the connector. And now we're trying, you know, in, ideally it comes up through here and then over here. And then now it should go out to where, to where it belongs, out here. And it does. All right, so that problem is solved. Um, now the next thing that we need to do is worry about the chip itself. So let's look back at the chip, if we can find it, because we're going to have to start tying him on. All right, found him. Here he is. All right, so that means the chip needs to go like this, and we'll flip him up. and start matching some lines. Okay, so let's match this line first. So let's go back to the board view. Screenshot, board view. All right, so this here is charger A gate. All right, so charger A gate. Let's see if we can figure out how to get charger A gate to get a connection. So what are our choices? Let's do N for nets and type in charger A gate div. All right, so charger A gate connects to a test point here and a bunch of components around here. So there's a 
a little resistor there, 7185, and a cap there. So let's compare that to the actual schematic. So resistor 7185, let's type in 7185. All right, so here's this charger A gate div has to come. Uh, it's the gate signal that's going to connect source and drain, and it needs to plug into the chip, and it needs to um, have continuity with R7185 and R7186. That's where it comes from. So R7185 and R7186. So let's go back to here and find R7185, and here's R7186. All right, so pin one of R7186, right there, and pin two of R7185. So that's this. So these two things need to be connected to those two things need to be connected to this guy right there in order for this thing to work. So this is, you know, this chip is sort of a double-sided transistor and we need to have the gate present which is going to open up the transistor when the right conditions are met. So we've got to get that gate there. We can't just skip that. So our choice now is <coughs> that we could run a long jumper. So we could, that would have to be on the other side of the board. So let's see what that would look like. We would have to get from, I'm gonna move the chip off for now and not lose them again. So we would need to get from flipping the board over All right, so here is R7185, and this is R7186. So both of these guys. And then we have to get from here to around the board to the crater where the chip needs to sit. And that's, that's going to be a long jumper that goes around the board. So let's see if we can kind of get away with not having to make that. So what would it take? If we could figure out... You know, who in here is our, you know, that, that same uh, Charger A gate div line that talks to R7185-86. If we could figure that out, then we could just make a short micro jumper from whoever it is in here um, to the chip itself without having to do a wrap around the board jumper. So let's see if we can do that. So here's our strategy for figuring that out. We are going to take a wire and I've been kind of doing a little research. We, we're gonna solder it here onto R7186. So now it's on this just as a plain old test wire. Get on there just for a little bit. All right, so we've got that test wire now soldered to our charger A gate, gate line and I have attached it to um, not screenshot. I've attached it to an alligator clamp and then the alligator clamp I'm going to plug into the multimeter. It's still in continuity mode. So my black probe now is going to beep whenever I touch something that has continuity with that line. So hopefully we can find some space in the crater that is that line. Let's try it. And now we're gonna hunt. All right, are you charger A gate? No, 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 yes. No, 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 yes. Great, all right, so now we know that that little via there is charger A gate. So let's get back our chip and let's start making things happen. All right, so let's review. Chip is gonna go on with the dot side down. So we'll kind of flip it, 
flip it like this. Now we have to kind of decide where is this chip ultimately going to, to lay down. And it was up here, so we could kind of glue it up there. All right, so let's make a connection then. This is our uh, A gate. So we're gonna take off the remnant of the original jumper that was on there. And we are going to make a new jumper and we can use thin wire because um, it's a thin little gate line. That's all that it is. So we'll use a piece of magnet wire. And nothing else. Really wish I had my tweezers. Pretty robust. And then we'll bring that guy up. To the gate pad. Okay. All right, so that connection is done. All right, now the next connection, these two guys. So these two guys, I'm pretty sure are the DC inline that we've been working on. So let's just check. So we'll go back to the board view. We're gonna, <coughs> oh, we need to, let's, before we do that, let's go back and check to make sure our continuity test works now. It should, but just to confirm, we have our wire soldered to um, R7186. And then we're gonna come over here and now we should get a beep all the way up to here. Which we did a second ago. There we go. Hard to beep through flux. So that's now good. So we were able to avoid an over the board jumper at least and get a relatively short jumper there. Next, let's go back to the board view, flip it over, and let's deal with these guys. So this is our DC in G3H line. So that's an easy one for us. All we have to do is go, all we have to do is to go from here to our same spot or we could even go, you know, down there, but I think that's easiest. So we will grab another piece of wire. All right, so we're just gonna poke it in here with the, with the other one. Technically, we could edit this to just be one wire that goes from the crater to this little trace and then up to the chip all right we need to have both of those in there and not touch it anything else then this guy is going to come up 
I'm going to, just for simplicity's sake, get rid of the other old jumpers that were, that we inherited. Ah. Okay, and then confirm. Let's get the multimeter. I'm gonna take off my alligator clamp and put back on the red lead, regular lead. And now we should have um, continuity from the DCN at the connector all the way up to here. It's hard to get through the flux. Okay, so that's good. Now let's look back. These two, these the, the two that are left here are gonna be straightforward because that's just gonna be the sort of existing parts of the um, part of the board that is not burned up. So if we look over at the board view, you know, down here, these two are just like ground anchor pads. This one is the S gate line, and then this is the DC in G3H inrush. <coughs> so this one, let's do S gate first. So S gate, so let's make sure that the pad on the board is actually talking to that line and that the line is not broken off. So just to be clear, we wanna make sure that if we make a connection between the chip to the remaining pad on the board, we need to make sure that that pad doesn't have the line broken off in here, that it actually still talks to whoever's on the other side. So that's why we need to kind of confirm that first. So we don't need our tester wire over on R7186 anymore. So we'll take it off. And we need it on pad one of R7181, which is right there. At least I'm pretty sure, but I could be wrong. It's easy to forget this stuff. All right, so now that is tested, um, that is attached. So we're gonna go back to our alligator clamp, um, plugging in our alligator clamp to the multimeter in continuity mode. I don't want my multimeter to go to sleep. We're gonna grab the black lead then, and now just test to confirm that our situation is working. So we'll get continuity on that line. This is the S gate line. And now we're gonna do a test to say, does it actually make it through the board to here? And it does, good. So now we know that our line is intact from uh, you know, the, the resistor through the board. It didn't get chopped up in the crater and it actually arrives here at the pad. So that's good news for us because it means that we can just solder straight from this pad. So we will take off the existing jumper. I'll take the one off of there as well. And now we're gonna make a another little jumper. If I can find another piece of wire. This stuff is usually just everywhere. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna go from the escape pad. And 
And I'm, I really want to make sure that I'm actually like burning off the ins insulation when I when I put the wire in in the pad. All right, and then it's going to go up and attach to the S gate input on the chip which is that guy right there. So I'll get a little extra solder for that. Chip probably is pretty beat up by now. Probably doesn't even work. All right, this chip has been used and abused. Poor little dude. Get off there. Done with you. All right, then hopefully the other side is as straightforward as well. So we just need to make sure that we have continuity through the board here on this line before we attach it up there. So let's. This video is going to be incredibly long and boring. All right, one of these is pad pad one, and the other one's pad two, and I already forgot. And it gets late, and you really lose the ability to, you know, I think it's part of it's open broadcaster. Like I, if I had this in front of me, I could look up and be like, which one was pad one? But I have to keep switching. Uh, all the open broadcaster scenes so that you guys can follow along. Not that anyone would be hanging in this long. I sure wouldn't be. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see if we get any of the comments. Like, could you just make this like a two minute video? No, no, I can't. All right. So uh, this is flipped down according, uh, you know, compared to the board view. I'm just going to look myself. All right. So pad one is the one closest to the three-man guy in pad two is the one farthest away. All right, so that means eggs. All right, so that means pad one is the closest and pad two is farthest away. Is that even what I just said? Ha! <laughs> pad, pin one is closest to the three-man guy. Pin two is farthest away. All right. One is closest, two is furthest away. All right, so we are on two of resistor 7180. Let's go back and check the schematic. 7180, we are on pad two, which should, oh, we're gonna just confirm that it connects to the gate. So let's just do that little bit of multimetering just to make sure that we don't have a broken line that we need to chase down. All right, so if we have that on there. I'm gonna make sure the alligator clamp is actually clamped to the wire, which it is not. I think I used a different wire that was not tinned on the end. So now I gotta tin that wire. Always good when you're doing continuity mode to not skip over touching it to itself. Touch it itself. All right, now it's tinned, so that should be making a connection. So give me a beep. Beep right now. Awesome. All right, so now we're gonna flip over and this should be touching that gate that we just did. Give me a beep. Yay! All right, it is. So now we're gonna test the other side of that resistor. So our gate line that we just did is confirmed all the way out here. And now we're gonna move it over to the other side. 
All right, now it should be connected to the inrush line. So let's test and let's make sure we get a beep. Touch yourself, always touch yourself. Good rule of thumb. All right, now it should beep to these guys. Yay, yay, all right, good. So that tells us that we have a intact line of that inrush line through all of this mess. So that's good news. So that means we can make a jumper there. Being able to see if any of this is even worth our time, which has now been a long time. I feel really bad now because like one time I went on, ah, oh, there's like a mosquito in here. One time I went on a trip to I fix it of all places, um, which my friend Lewis absolutely cannot stand, and for no reason. Um, and uh, while I was gone, a MacBook board came in for repair, which I practically never see. I, we we see, you know, very few MacBooks. Most people are smart enough to send MacBook jobs directly to Lewis, so. This guy, I guess I'd fixed a couple of phones for him, and so he wanted to send me his MacBook. So he did, and since I was uh, gone for a week, I uh, had it sent sight unseen. You know, hey, Lewis, I'm going to be gone. Can you help me with this MacBook job? So he's like, okay. So, so I sent it. And it was supposed to be, you know, like the, the you know, customer's like, oh, it's just a backlight problem. You know, works after water damage. Everything's fine except for backlight. And backlight problems in MacBooks are traditionally straightforward. It's a very straightforward circuit. And so Lewis agreed to helping me fix a straightforward backlight problem. I didn't look at the board, which I think he forgets that, that I, I never saw it. I didn't intentionally uh, try to ruin his day. Um, so he gets it, and then he's... Then I'm at I fix it, you know, and I'm I'm telling him all about California and I fix it, and he's stuck back in New York uh, with this horrible board. So it turns out that it, like this board, it had a um, a short in the board, and you know I remember him telling me there's no way it was repairable, and that he, you know and I felt bad because it's like he he worked on it right away when it came and instead of making me wait, and it was super nice. But he's like, yeah, this this is a train wreck. There's no way I'm gonna be able to solve this board. And then, and then he did. He he got out, I, I think they, I think they got out a drill or something, and they like drilled the short out of the board. And then I remember he built like some work around, you know, skyscraper, of capacitors tower and he totally like redesigned this section and you know it's not a whole lot different than this repair here <laughs> you know um but it was really funny i remember that so now i so now i feel like uh really bad about that because i never even uh watched <laughs> the video that he did of it because it's like this video it's like super super long you know like no one could possibly stand who cares you know like you just want to fast forward to the end like did it work or not i would like to fast forward to the end right now just tell me just you know comment below did it work or not just put me out of my misery i can't stand it all right so now we should have continuity between the chip yay all the way through to our 7180. So that's good. So that means we have uh, confirmed that we've got everybody talking to who they should be talking to all the way out. I'm gonna switch the, um, switch back in my actual lead and not the alligator clamp lead. All right, so we've got all the way from the connector, we've got chatter all the way up through uh, the DC in line there. We've already confirmed the rest. All right, so now the next thing that we have to do before we can say, hey, let's fire it up and see what happens um, 
is work see what's going on over here so I see a whole lot of wires over here when I got this board I think it had I think 13 jumper wire so let's see what's going on with all this mess all right so uh, all right let's see let's see if we can get by without all of these all right so where are we what's going on over here um, let's see if we can figure that out screenshot and back to here and let's go let's do an overview real quick while we're here so we have already followed um, we already followed let's go back to the connector so I'm just gonna search for the word DC in and go back so here's the DC in board connector and if we kind of really get an overview of what's going on here as we've kind of got a lot of detail this side all is pretty much ground when you see no stuff it means those aren't even there so don't worry about it so then we've got this 5v s4 rs3 line that we didn't check but uh, i don't think that it's you know it's part of the damage god damn mosquitoes doors open living in a barn <laughs> all right so um so this line one and two is the dc in G g3h line and that's the one that we have been working on so we were able to follow it all the way out from the connector uh, we made that micro jumper so that it can talk to our 7012 which is that 68 kilo ohm resistor and then from there you know let's just kind of see see what it does uh, it looks like it has a you know kind of emergency path to ground uh, and then it looks like it comes to a a transistor which is a smart switch so the smart switch is going to connect source and drain i.e allowing it to go through and fill up this line as long as some conditions are met at the gate so this dc isolin isolation gate r uh, is going to open up this transistor so this guy is important so q uh 7010 and i think that's where we are right so q 7010 show me q 7010 find it all right so here it is uh and it is in the same area q 7010 where all these other micro jumpers are so let's confirm that so we're just going to glance back here at the microscope so here we are q10 q7010 7010 is this dude that is laying on its back like a dead bug with what looks like dead bug limbs coming out of it uh we can guess that this is probably ground and that's fine and then it looks like it at one time had one, two, three different contact points um, at the top of it. So let's go back over here and. Back to this guy because they're the same line. So let's make sure that's happening. Oh my God, this is boring. I'm going to kill myself. Okay. All right, so this needs to talk to there. All right. Now let's look around and see, um, are there any other micro jumpers on the board? And I wanna really go back and look at the primary problem all along was that this resistor here the G3, the DCN G3H line had low resistance to ground. So now that we've done all that and connected back everything, and so in theory, we've kind of hooked together parts of the board that maybe didn't used to talk to each other. This is the money. We want to make sure that this guy is still measuring 68K. And if it isn't, I'm probably going to shoot myself in the face. And it is. Can you guys see the multimeter? 67.3, close enough. 
All right, so that is a wrap on everything we need to do in order. Don't see any. I think this board, compared to how it was, I think this if it works, which would be awesome, uh, I think this is pretty good. Because, you know, like this board doesn't look covered in wires. It has, uh, let's count, because I kind of want to know. I, I don't think it's as, as low as I thought it would be. But, well, we're still using one ex two of the existing jumpers. So one, two, three to connect that chip back together. And then four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we got rid of five jumpers. And the, but it doesn't have any big long ones and it can use a standard um, DC and jack, so. All right, let's see what happens. I have a, uh, let's see if I can actually do this. Let's turn it around and see if we can see that spot. All right, maybe that'll work. Okay, let's see what I need to tape. The microphone's still over there though, so, oh well. All right, for now, I'm gonna just put a piece of tape on top of this guy. And another piece of tape on top of this guy. And if it does work, then we'll come back and make everything very stable for moving forward. But I just want to know if it'll work or not. Just want to know. All right, this is the second time I've ever taken apart one of these boards. So how does it go? I don't even know what side is up. I'm going to go. Show me a question mark folder. I don't think that's getting too hot. 
mark folder, yay! Link in question mark folder. I don't know if it has a backlight problem or not, but that is not my problem if it does. Um, all right, there you go. Uh, charger orange light. Actually, I think I do want to put in the, I want to see it boot up now. Turn that off. I'm going to put in this drive because I, I want to know if it has a backlight problem now or not. I don't know if the retina, retina errors um, will like not run the fan like the other ones. This fan is like covered in flux. Whoa. That is awesome hearing a chime after all that. All that work. Working kind of outside my domain of iPhones it is so weird, and like you can just there's like all kinds of like tips and tricks like that I that you know you just don't know that you just kind of have to learn by experience. I don't think that fan is making good connection at all, but it's, it's something. All right. I want to see this thing boot up. Green light again, yay! Fan is spinning, yay! I'm done. I hear chiming fan spin, I'm done, right? That's it. All right. I want to know if it's got a backlight problem or not. Yay, do you see that? It's a beautiful sound of spinning fan. <laughs>